next level development. Okay, because some of you will say, well, I really want to learn how to do this and I'm not capable right now. I get that. Okay, what I'm just encouraging you to do is, is work on these tools while we are getting to those goals that you have. But number, uh, number two is going to help you with that. Repetition to build stamina and speed. We all know this, okay? If you want to learn how to play faster, you know, whatever it might be, whether it's a lick or a, something on the guitar that you want to learn how to do, whatever it might be, you do it through repetition, okay? This isn't a techniques webinar and I'm not going to get all deep into that, but you understand that you have to break down something to build it back up. You have to sit and do something over and over and over to, to, be, to develop that strength and that stamina. So if, if your goal was to learn how to play faster stuff, right? Whether it's down, whatever it might be, or alternate, you've got to develop these techniques. So Again, this goes back to what I was saying. In the meantime, try and write some other stuff, but keep working on these things. When you're not in a creative space, this is a great time to start working on that repetition to build that strength and that stamina. Okay. Uh, B, break down techniques for deeper understanding and development. Sometimes when you break down an idea, let's just take something small here. Let's say I was doing something like this. Okay. I'm going to do a little string skipping thing. And again, I don't want to waste a bunch of time on this, but... exercise that turned into a song but what I'm doing is I'm just skipping over a string and I'm going seven nine and then seven and then I'm back and then I'm heading out here to the ten you can see how I'm turning it into a little exercise and I'm doing a pull off and then I'm going back to the nine back to the seven and again I, I don't want to spend a bunch of time on this because we don't have a lot of time and it's not about this one guitar lick. Let's just say I made a lick out of that. See, you could you could take something like that and learn it, and then practice it, develop it, but then maybe it morphs into something else. You start exploring it in a different way, and it becomes something else that you can use in your own playing. So you're developing your understanding of your fretboard. You're developing your technique. And then on a creative level, when you're feeling inspired, you're going to convert that into something that sounds uh, a little more like you in your comfort zone. And you're going to start writing a riff around it. Like that would sound really good over E. Over, and then I could try it over A. over that so all of a sudden I've got this cool little idea that could work over E and A if I chose to if that's the kind of chord progression that I'm looking for you see so there's lots of really great ways inspiration doesn't have to be this monumental eight-hour thing sometimes you just hear a riff or you just hear somebody play something and you go hey that's kind of cool I don't need to play it exactly like so and so I just need the idea to get me to kickstart me to another level Okay, that's the point of the deeper, you know, looking deeper into a riff or an idea that you're 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 seeking or you've just found some something that's just come into your your funnel of guitar playing that you you think is cool. Okay, and then the last one, which we kind of talked about, see there is study songs and genres you like for inspiration and understanding. If you want to write like blues rock players, if you want to write like metal players, if you want to write like 70s rock players, if you, whatever, Deep Purple, whatever it might be, one of the greatest things you can possibly do is learn some things from them. Learn some songs, learn some riffs, learn some solos. Look at Richie Blackmore and see what he's doing, right? Look at Eric Clapton and see what he's doing. Look at Ingve Malmsteen and see what he's doing. I mean, there's a million of these players where a lot of times we stop at learning a song or an idea from a song. Right? We'll learn something and then we just move on and we learn something else. Now, I, I'm, I'm not against learning songs. I think it's one of the greatest things that you can do. Learn songs from artists that you um, want to emulate, styles that you want to emulate. For me, and you've probably heard me talk about this before, but it's like painting. If you wanted to learn how to paint, 
One way that you learn how to paint is by studying other painters. So you can understand. I mean, at some point you learned what the color blue and this and a triangle and a square and all these things did, even though you weren't thinking of it like that, those were your tools. And then you took it into a more creative space and you started learning how to mix and match these things and you, be, you came up with your own thing, right? But music is no different. We just use the information out there, whether it's scales and theory and all these things, which we can call logical. And then music, songs, bands, styles of music is kind of the real world element, right? That's like our, our spray paint, right? That sort of thing. So we can combine all of these different things to come up with ideas, but the only way we can do that is we have to first learn something by somebody else. And here's the big thing. And then we got to break it down. Like instead of just learning it and going, oh, oh, that's whatever, and there it is, and now I can impress my friends. That's great. If that's if that's what you want, I think that's awesome. But there's another level happening there, which is that artist or group of people took time to to break something down and then add pieces together, which became a song. The more we can learn how to break that down, which we are going to do in the the rock rhythm course as well the more you understand about the style of music that you're trying to write in the first place or the song structure or all these different things. It's really amazing and it's a lot of fun. It may not seem as productive because you're not just practicing finger exercises for three hours and I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm not saying don't do that. You wanna do all that too. I'm just saying the more you start looking at the music around you and the music that you like, the more you start understanding what's actually happening in here. <laughs>